everyone. Welcome back to Nostalgic Pumpkin Productions. To those of you who are new here and have never seen a video before, I am Nasha Dean. It's nice to meet you. And for those of you who have been here for a while, hello all. Welcome back. I hope you have been well. So you are probably noticing that I look a little bit different today. Um, I did an old Hollywood inspired makeup look for the video today. And there's a very important reason for that, which I will explain in a moment. But before I get into it, I would like to give all of you a little bit of an update into why I've been gone so long aside from healing from burnout, which you already are aware of. Back in August of 2023, I realized that I was pretty miserable doing voiceover and that while it was something that I really had enjoyed for a large period of time, it was not truly what I wanted to do with my career. I did not want to just keep working from home and recording audiobooks that often were much too long for me and often were boring as all get out. And, you know, it just, it got to a point that it was very dry and I was ready for a change. And one of the main things in my life that I have always known I've always wanted to do was to be a film actor. And for a long period of time, I always thought, no, I can't do that. I'm not good enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. Or there were voices around me from other people who were parroting the same thing. And being the people pleaser that I used to be, I always just said, okay, you're right. I will find something else to do. But nothing else ever fulfilled me. And so by the time my birthday came around this year, I was like, this is dumb. I am well into my 30s at this point, and I deserve to be happy. And I want to do what makes me happy. And what I have always wanted to do was to be a film actress. So Back in October, I began actively auditioning and working towards getting work in the film industry. As yet, I have not been successful. I have spoken to many, 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 many people over the last couple of months. I've had invitations to things. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talking and invitation, but nothing has actually come to fruition yet. However, that doesn't mean that it won't. Um, but in March, the big thing that happened was I became represented officially by a talent agency. And last week I had my first actor's headshots taken in almost a decade. And that was really exciting. My photographer was amazing and I'm waiting for the photos to be finalized at this point, um, before I can get them back and then start putting them on my resume and, you know, putting them out there. But progress is being made and lots of changes are on the horizon. So that is part of the reason why I have been gone for so long. Um, but I am going to try to start integrating myself back in as my schedule as an auditioning actor permits. Um, but on that vein, the video that I am doing today is going to be a rather vulnerable one for me because of the fact that all of this, all of the events of my life leading up to this point were championed and inspired ultimately by one person who was very integral in my upbringing. And for those of you who know me, you already know where I'm going with this. You've probably heard it a million times before. But for those of you who don't know me that are watching this channel for the first time or my subscribers that have just come in for the, the Cary Grant biography and don't know anything about me, the person that I am going to be discussing today is my grandmother. Now, this is not the grandmother whose house I lived in for 13 months in 2023. Um, this is another grandmother. And she passed away when I was 17 years old. But all of my memories as a child contain her. Now, there's a great deal of my childhood that I don't remember. So I can't speak for those parts of my life. But for the memories that I have been able to retain, they seem to suggest that 
because I spent every day with my grandparents for the most part, that technically my grandmother was at least partially instrumental in raising me as a child. And she was a really amazing human being. My grandma was a little bit of a rebel. Um, she was sassy. She had fire. She was a firecracker of a person. And all of my personality and the woman that I became was effortlessly and lovingly formed by her influence. And my love for old Hollywood and the movies of old Hollywood and the actors that I have been highlighting in the old Hollywood biography series are due to her. Some of my most fond memories growing up um, were watching Cary Grant movies with my grandma, sitting on the floor in the living room like an inch away from the TV screen, just completely absorbed in the story and in the people. And that just became like a big thing. Like our whole interaction with one another revolved so heavily around television and the movies. It was such a wonderful way to grow up. All of my history of like, you know, the Second World War and, you know, all of those things were gleaned from my interest in old Hollywood and from my grandmother's memories of that time period. And I was such a history nut because of the fact that my grandma was just constantly telling me all of these things that she remembered from when she was growing up. And it became such a magical thing for me, like being able to pick up a book and read about something that my grandma had been telling me about just a couple of hours before was so exciting to me. It made me feel like a time traveler. And it was just the most wonderful childhood. And she was so instrumental in making an otherwise not terribly magical childhood, the most magical childhood that a kid could ever want. My days at my grandma's house were the best. And I deeply miss her. And I wanted to pay homage to her because of the fact that now, after all of these years of listening to everybody but myself, I do not recommend that, by the way. Um, spending all of my life letting other people run my life for me and finally coming to the realization, no, this is wrong. I need to live for myself. If my grandmother were alive, she would be shouting from the rooftops. <laughs> she would have been so proud of me. The one thing that I remember the most about my grandma was that she was constantly my champion. She was always teaching me to follow my dreams, always teaching me to be true to myself, and always teaching me to not be afraid of things that are unknown. But she was the only voice in my life who was telling me that. Everyone else growing up was always telling me, no, you need to be afraid of the unknown. You don't need to go out there and do that. You don't know what's going to happen. And because you don't know what's going to happen, you should get a real job and, you know, work in retail or work at this place or, you know, so many different people always told me so many different things. And because I was raised to listen to your authority, you know, that's what I did, particularly after my grandmother passed away. It was just, OK, well, these are the only voices that I have now. But I never felt happy doing that. and. I'm, if there's one thing in my life that I really regret, it's that I didn't listen to my grandmother sooner and do what I've always wanted to do with my life and follow my dreams. But I am now. <laughs> so in honor of my grandma's 101st year and in honor of this massive life tradition that I am entering, I want to do a short memorandum of her life in this video. Um, the footage that I am going to be sharing with you is going to be massively edit edited down 
Some of the photos will be edited to crop out any children in the photos. Um, and there will be a lot of other things that won't be shared. Um, I probably won't be sharing too much footage of my grandfather just because he always appears in holiday things where the rest of our family is involved. And because I don't have my family's permission to share those videos, I will not be including them. I will only be including the videos of myself and my grandmother and some videos that my grandfather shot of my grandma over the years. And then I'll share some family photos and that will round off the video. So I'm sorry that this part has been rambly. <laughs> But that's what happens when I don't have a script and my brain goes berserk and <laughs> it is what it is. But um, from here on out, we will be transitioning into the remembering my grandma section. So I hope that you have enjoyed this lengthy introduction and I hope that you will enjoy the remainder of the video. From the very first moment that I was brought home and met my grandma, we were kind of inseparable. She absolutely adored me, treated me with tenderness and love, and always did her best to understand me as a human being. She and my grandpa were instrumental in molding me into the woman I am today. Grandpa helped cultivate my creative side, teaching me how to use his video camera and how to properly film a family get-together, a mantle he passed on to me when he passed away in 2005. For the three years between his passing before I went to college, I continued to document the family get-togethers, and then my cousin took over after I left for school. As you can see from many parts of this footage, my grandpa was a wonderful cinematographer. All of the footage I found that he shot was so beautifully done, and those images he captured are eternally and gorgeously enmeshed in my brain and in my soul. It's because of my grandpa that I became interested in making my own films. Grandma helped in the other areas of my life where she felt there was need. She also helped me to learn to educate myself, something that definitely came in handy as I got older. There was a spare room in their house that had been made into a library. It was wall-to-wall -wall bookshelves without an inch of space on any of them. In fact, I remember there were often boxes of books sitting in the corners that my grandmother had gotten from a yard sale and never found space for on the shelves because there simply wasn't any. One of my most treasured possessions is a vintage copy of Grimm's fairy tales that my grandmother let me keep as a teenager. I was so enthralled by the stories in that little red leather-bound book with gold leaf lettering on the front. It was that book that got me interested in gothic tales of horror and myth and instilled in me a love for the spooky, macabre, and unexplained. But the books beyond that, which grandma shared with me, were books of history something I would become obsessed with very quickly. She would often use books from their library in tandem with her own memories and classic Hollywood films made during that time to teach me about her memories of what life was like in the Second World War. She taught me about growing up during the Great Depression, what the world was like for women at that time, and she also taught me things she had to learn as a woman of that era, like how to cook, clean, and take care of a home and a family. These were also things that I would need to know in order to learn how to take care of myself, and she saw that that was very important. When lessons were over, she would often sit in her chair in the corner of the house and read for a while. Or she'd play solitaire by herself while I watched TV with Grandpa. She also loved to do puzzles, which I would sometimes join her in. But the one thing that never failed was our constant joy of watching old Hollywood movies or classic television together. It didn't matter whether the movie was Disney or Warner Brothers, MGM or Paramount, or if we were watching Cary Grant, Judy Holliday, William Holden, or Betty Hutton. We were always blown away by the actors we watched. And some of those TV shows we watched became shows I would continue to enjoy watching even to this day. Like Star Trek The Original Series, Bonanza, The Twilight Zone, The Dick Van Dyke Show, Diagnosis Murder, Matlock or Murder, She Wrote. So many of my deepest core memories are sitting in front of the TV on the floor in the living room, staring deeply into the faces of those wonderful actors, sharing popcorn with my grandma, who was equally as starry-eyed and enamored of those wonderful people on the silver screen as I was. I would sit there, eyes wide, dreaming that someday I would be up there in lights, just like them. 
Now all of those years have passed, and my sweet grandparents are both long gone. But the legacy of love that they instilled in me lives on. The lessons I was taught were things I carried into my adult life. My grandfather's lessons on how to use a video camera have translated into me becoming a YouTuber and making my own films to share with the world. My grandmother's lessons on how to read books and educate myself have made me an avid researcher, which culminated into my becoming a documentary filmmaker and making biographies on the old actors who so deeply inspired both of us all of those years ago when we sat in the living room together watching old movies in the dark. But one final lesson my grandmother taught me was to follow my dreams and keep on fighting till I reached them. And that one lesson has had the deepest hold on me. Now, finally, 19 years after her death, I'm doing as my grandma always taught me, and I'm working hard to become a movie actor. The love and inspiration that my grandma instilled in me has become the deepest and most indelible part of my DNA. Unknowingly, I became an extension of her. After spending so many years of my life with her and my grandpa, almost every single day, her stubbornness, her zest for life, and her spitfire nature nurtured me and kept me going when life kicked me down and wouldn't let me get back up. I survived because she taught me how to. I will eternally miss her, but more so. I will eternally be grateful for the fact that she was my grandma and that she loved and cared for me as much as she did. Had she lived, my grandma would be 101 years old on May 19th. So, in honor of the anniversary of her birth, I present to you these memories of my grandma, Laura Louise. Oh, and she's gonna have red hair. Yeah. Get into this. <laughs> He's not into babies yet. Are you, sweetheart? Say, Grandpa. Grandpa. She's not going to do it anymore. Grandpa. Good kitchen. Good kitchen. Good kitchen. When did that happen? When did that happen? <laughs> Some of the shells in the library. There's Miss Lohan. College campus. To campus. Ross, did you date any of this? Yes, ma'am.
How's it going, dear? Come. Yeah. Smell by yourself. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Watch him on trip over. This is a nice little coach over. Hello. Wow. Say hi, Grandpa. Is she awake? You're going too fast. Where's Grandpa? Wait to Grandpa. Hey. Hey. Her little cheeks are getting pink. Wait a minute, Mar. Hey, babe. How are you? Hi, Grandpa. Hi, Grandpa. Yeah, she smiled. Hi, Grandpa. Hi. Hello, dear. way a little did you have a nice walk huh? did you Okay, too close. You're getting out of the light. Okay. Wait, Grandpa. Clap your hands for Daddy. 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 Look at the camera and tell her what it is. It's my new album. Mom, 
Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now push it back. <laughs> See where it goes there? Now push it again. That's it. That's all. Now push the button. Turn around telling. No, that's it. Now we have to put it in the car. Did you push the button? Yeah. What happened? I did. Huh? 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 Alright. Turn her around so you can see her face. Turn her around. That's it. That's Do you like your baby? Yeah. Ask her what's, what what's the baby's name? Baby thing. Josephine. Josephine. Hold her out now, hug her. Give the baby a kiss. Sing Rockabye Baby. I hold her. Okay? Put your head down more. Oh, I know. Good. Okay, yeah, that one. Yeah. 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 